Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 401. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, you're going to learn three reasons to protect your wealth. And there are three things that you need to realize and recognize so that you don't get caught up going one direction when the economy and cycles are telling you that something else is going on. So I often talk about how the economy operates on cycles and cycles are things that repeat in time. This is part of nature. Just like we have the four seasons, things do continue and come around again in a cycle. And the economy works in this way. There's very much the boom, bust, recession, recovery cycle that I talk about in terms of four different distinct phases in the economy. Right now we're in that boom cycle where there's probably, I'd say, several different bubbles that are formed out there in the bond market, in the real estate market, some say in the stock market, although I see the market as overvalued as some people do, but there are definite things happening that seem to be in excess. And there, there is a key indicator of where we are in any given cycle. And that key indicator that I really like to watch is how interest rates are doing and what direction they're moving. Interest rates, as you know, are controlled by the Federal Reserve and they set interest rates and determine when to raise interest rates. Interest rates, of course, are simply the cost of money. It's the cost of borrowing and it's how much we pay the banks in order to borrow. So as interest rates rise, of course, it gets more expensive to borrow. Interest costs go up and that makes mortgages less affordable because your payment is larger now that a bigger percentage of that payment is going to be interest and not just principal plus a lesser amount of interest. You're going to have to pay more interest as interest rates go up. And it's something that I want you to pay attention to because I think many people got surprised when we had the crash of 2008. And don't get me wrong, I'm not predicting a crash, but I am saying that This is a time to be aware that we are getting late in the cycle and that this kind of thing can portend a crash. And certainly the crash of 2008, 7, 8, certainly the crash of 2000, there were things that led up to that that would have let you know what was going to happen in the market or at least to be a little bit more cautious, be aware of what's going on, And that is what interest rates were doing. You see, in 2007, 2008, people thought housing prices would only go up. They thought it would just continue going up forever and that this was a new reality. Kind of like the same thing that happened in the year 2000 when stocks kept going up and people just thought that was the new economy and they were gonna keep going up to the sky. But no, it took 17 years for Microsoft to come back and meet the old high that it had in the year 2000. So these things can cause pullbacks of a major kind. And certainly we saw that in the housing market in 2008. Since that time, interest rates went back down again. And now we've had this recovery in housing prices. And some might say that the bubble is bigger than ever. As interest rates are rising, it means that the Federal Reserve is trying to slow down the economy. It's putting the brakes on. If you were riding a bicycle and you start to squeeze your brake handles, it's like that. Where rising interest rates, you know when you do this thing that it's going to cause a slowdown in the economy, just like squeezing your brakes is going to cause your bike to slow down. But when rates start to rise, people actually rush out to buy homes. They buy more because they're afraid that interest rates are going to go higher. So it gives them incentive to buy today rather than waiting till tomorrow. Whereas when interest rates are declining, 
they're not in a hurry because they feel like rates are gonna get cheaper. So they can take their time and look around and maybe get a better mortgage rate from waiting. But when rates are rising, it's just the opposite. People are rushing out to buy because they are afraid that interest rates are going higher and they'll be able to afford less of a home or not be able to afford the home they want at all. So it actually pushes people to buy when interest rates are going up. And just as people do that, just as they get caught thinking they have to rush out and buy a home because appreciation is going crazy, there is that enormous price rise that happens as the herd rushes out to lock in interest rates before they go higher. And just when people do that, the market starts to slow down, there are fewer sales, and then as more supply starts to accumulate, prices need to drop, and it's kind of a cycle that begins where the real estate market starts to slow down, prices start to come down, people have to start cutting prices in order to get people interested, especially to make it more affordable since interest rates have gone up and it's now costing more to borrow. So it can become a downward spiral and that's what can cause the peak of a market and then the crash of a market and certainly the very big pullback that we had in 2008. Part of that was going on and there were other things happening as well. But for this podcast, I really wanna focus on interest rates and what that indicator is telling you. I'm really not trying to explain in this podcast what causes all kinds of crashes, that's not the purpose. The purpose is mainly to show you that interest rates are a very important indicator that tell you where we are in the cycle. They're kind of a yellow caution flag for you to be aware so that you can make some intelligent moves and plans in your life so that you're not caught jumping in at the top, which a lot of people are caught looking the wrong way and jumping in right at the top of a market. It happens all the time and it's so easy to happen because there's fear. There's that fear of, oh my gosh, I have to buy a house now or I won't be able to afford one. Or, oh my gosh, I have to buy a house now because interest rates are going up, prices are going up. Oh my gosh, prices are going up even more now. There's all that fear that makes people run like a herd and do the wrong thing at exactly the wrong time. And that's what I'm trying to talk with you about and that's what I'm trying to help you from not doing. So I want you to realize when interest rates are rising, it's a sign that the economy is going to start slowing down. Even if prices on homes are going crazy and it seems like that's never going to end, it eventually is going to end. And what's ending it is the raising of interest rates. So just be aware, that's not a time to take a big risk. It's actually the time to start reducing your risk. I talk about the six steps to wealth and step six is protect your wealth. That means you don't wanna stay too leveraged for too long. So here are three things you need to do when you start seeing interest rates rising. Number one, it means you wanna pay down your high interest rate debt. So any debt that you have, certainly credit card debt, any debt that you have that's high interest rate, you wanna start paying down that debt. Again, I don't encourage you to pay off your mortgage unless you have a variable rate mortgage, but rather than pay off your variable rate mortgage, the better thing to do would be number two, refinance from a variable rate mortgage to a fixed rate mortgage. So a variable rate mortgage is going to rise as interest rates rise. It's gonna continually reset higher. And if you have a fixed rate mortgage, it doesn't matter what interest rates do, your mortgage is locked in for 30 years at that interest rate. So if rates are going to 5%, 6%, 7%, and you're locked in at 4% with a fixed rate mortgage, that means you're only gonna have to pay 4% for the life of your loan. So you wanna lock in a fixed interest rate as soon as possible so that you're not subject to your mortgage payment rising. A lot of people lost their homes in 2008 because they had variable rate mortgages and were caught off guard when their payments started to go up because of rising interest rates. Number three, you wanna start being more cautious with real estate because real estate is very interest rate sensitive. So realize that you wanna start taking less risk. When interest rates rise, it's a time to become more cautious with interest rate and not the time to be over leveraged. 
Years ago, there were people that I knew that borrowed money right at the peak of the market. They went and they took all the equity out of their home as interest rates were rising. And unfortunately, then they went and bought a lot more real estate right as the craziness was happening. And then shortly after that, prices started to drop. And so what happened was they had leveraged themselves right at the peak of the bubble and unfortunately lost all of those properties because then the value went below what they were worth and what they had borrowed. And so they were underwater on their properties and lost them. So that's what I don't wanna have happen. I don't want you to be getting more aggressive as interest rates are rising. I want you to be getting less aggressive, paying off debt, getting more conservative as interest rates are rising. And if you watch the cycle and understand what rising interest rates mean, then you'll know exactly where you are and what's coming next and how to protect yourself and your wealth. If you aren't connected to me yet on Instagram, please go on over to instagram.com forward slash Linda P. Jones. I have twice a day short wealth tips that I give you, and they're just a nice little education, reminder, update of what's going on and what I'm thinking about the economy. So connect over at instagram.com forward slash Linda P. Jones. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.